She's in her card stock era for one day. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. You heard me right. I'm in my card stock era just for one day this month and this is what I've made. I think it is beautiful and I already have the perfect place to hang it in my craft room. I am going to take you step by step through this process. Remember, card stock crafting is really not my jam, but I wanted to challenge myself to try something different and hopefully you will find it helpful. If you do, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at the materials and dive right in. The materials I'm using for this tutorial include my Cricut Maker. I'll use multiple purple strong grip mats, a Cricut Brayer, foam squares to add dimension to the cardstock. I'm using some glitter cardstock and some that's just plain. The glitter cardstock is the Cricut brand for the most part. And I'm using this 9x9 shadow box from Michaels. I did leave a link to it below. Now, pay attention to the type of shadow box that you purchase. This one is uh, for hanging. This previous shadow box that I made when I was crafting with my Facebook group, this one is the kind that you can hang or you can just use it and display it the regular way. So just pay attention to that if you don't plan to get this same exact one. Now let's head over to the computer so that I can show you the file that I found on Creative Fabrica. It is absolutely perfect for beginners because it gives you ideas of the color combinations for the paper. And then right after that, we will go into Cricut Design Space. Let's head over there now. I am on the Creative Fabrica website and I just did a search for layered shadow boxes. When I found this file, I immediately just fell in love with it. I think it is so gorgeous. And once you download it, if you decide to do the same file, you'll see just how much thought and effort has been put into it. I think it's perfect for beginners because not only is the file included, but it also offers different options and ideas for the colors of cardstock to use when you're layering the file. I just think it's gorgeous. Let's get it downloaded and head over to Cricut Design Space. I have downloaded the file and I extracted it. Now I am uploading the file into Cricut Design Space. If you select this same file, you'll notice that there is a folder that has ideas. I selected idea number nine because I just love the color choices. The reason why I didn't use the file exactly the way that it is right here is because I don't have all of those different colors of gray. The first thing I want you to notice is that the file comes in at 12 by 12. It is locked. Keep the proportions locked. When you get ready to resize yours, make sure you've measured the inside of your shadow box to make sure that, that you size your paper correctly. When you look at this file, it shows you what the colors are. So I'm looking at my layers panel and I can see the first layer is white. The second layer is a light gray. Third layer is a darker gray, then red, then black, and then back to red. Well, I don't have all those exact colors and I kind of wanted to have yellow in my file anyway. What I decided to do was duplicate this file and then just move one out of the way. That way and I don't mess up the original and I can still just kind of play around with this new one. What I decided to do was with the colors of cardstock that I have on hand, I kind of just started to play around with the color combinations until I found the combination that would work best for me. Now, once I had the combination the exact way that I wanted it after playing around with variations of red, black, white, and gray, I organized the colors or the layers the way that I wanted to. And then I just went through and renamed each of the layers so that I would know how to number my cardstock on the back. You'll see that when I'm putting the 
card stock in the Cricut and you'll also see it once I'm putting the file together after the card stock has been cut. So that's all I'm doing right here is just kind of playing around with the colors. I suggest you do that too and then decide what you want your layers to look like before it starts to cut. Because what you'll notice is your Cricut is not going to cut your card stock in the same order that it is that you see right here on the canvas. What I'm doing right here is double clicking on each layer in my layers panel and I'm just numbering the layers. And as I number here, I'm also writing on the back of my card stock so that I know which number is which. So my first number is number one, which will be layer number one on the back of my white glitter card stock. I wrote the number one. Once I finished doing that, I did save this file as um, Mandela Passion 7 layers, and then I clicked make. Now I'm on the prepare screen. I am selecting the glitter card stock option for my base material, and I'm using this to be cut with more pressure. Everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. The first layer that my Cricut is going to cut is the silver layer. I have it on the mat, it's secure. I just like to use purple mats. I just feel like it'll hold the paper better. Just wanna go over it with my brayer. I'll get this one inserted. I like to have the next mat already prepared so that as soon as I take one out, I can just insert the the next one and so on and so forth. Before I remove this from my machine, I'm definitely going to check to make sure it cut all the way through because there's nothing worse than removing it and then realizing that it didn't. So I'm gonna look at it. Okay, so it looks good right here. Okay, it looks like it cut very, very nicely. I actually think this is a really, really good cut. Okay, so I'm going to get this removed and I'm going to continue with this process, but here are all of my mats. So I went ahead and prepared all of them. I'm going to speed the rest of this up and I will get each mat loaded according to the order from Cricut Design Space. This is my very last layer. And what I'm doing now is just removing the mat from the card stock instead of removing the card stock from the mat. According to a couple of the ladies in my Facebook group, it's best to do it this way so the card stock doesn't curl up. I like to use purple mats. I know that's not a popular opinion. It's just the way that I do it. But as always, do what works best for you. I have taken the frame apart and this frame is actually made up of, of four parts. There's the outer piece, the inside piece, the glass, and then the backing. Now, really what I should have done, what that I didn't do is that I should have made my pieces smaller to fit inside of that smaller square, but I didn't. And as of right now, it's too late. So we're gonna go with this. I'm gonna put that inside piece back inside. Now I could have just made all the cardstock press up against the glass, but I don't think that would have looked as nice. So I'm not going to do that. I do have all my parts and I'm going to just do my best to make this fit. I'm gonna stuff it in there. So here's layer number seven and I have all the layers numbered. There's six, five, then this other black layer is four, three, then the yellow layer is two, and then the top layer is number one. What I'm going to do is lay that bottom layer down. I'm using the smallest of the foam dots that I have, and I'm just going to put the foam dots on the corners of the smaller layer. So layer number seven is on the bottom. On the back of layer number six, I'm putting the foam dots in the corners and then one in the center. And I'll just continue with this and making sure they're all lined up 
as I, you know, put the layers together. So I'll do this first one kind of slowly and then the rest of it, I'll speed it up. So I have my foam dots. I'm just removing the backing. I'm going to do my very, very best to line it up. I also think it's a good idea to have your picture up from Cricut Design Space so you can make sure that your paper is facing the right direction. So, you know, the, the top side is actually at the top and go based on the picture. I'll speed the rest of this up. Okay, so I have all of the layers and I put the foam dots in between each layer. I think it looks very pretty. And because I didn't do this the right way in terms of cutting, because really I should have been cutting, you know, I should have measured inside here. I didn't, but it's okay. I'm going to flip this over and just put it on top back here. And I'm going to try to stuff this in here so that I can close the back. Um, now, if you are wondering, like, can you add lights to this or any of that? I would assume you can. That is not something I would be interested in doing because I don't want to have to manage this. I want to be able to just hang this up somewhere in my craft room and, and not be thinking about the lights and the batteries or any of that. I'm just using my spatula and I'm going to just try to close this. And now let me uh, just kind of raise this up a little bit and then I will get this hung up. And this is the finished product. I think it looks beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. I love it. I am going to find the perfect place to hang this in my craft room because these are definitely my colors. And um, I, I, I just love it. I, I'm not a cardstock crafter. I'm sure there are a lot of things I could or would have done differently, um, but I'm perfectly fine with the way I did this. Hopefully you did find this helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.